It's speed reviews time. So today I'm gonna update you on all the new makeup products I've been testing recently, including these, the new holiday palettes from Hourglass, new Tarte, new Fenty, new Jones Road, some new drugstore as well. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. As always, I will have timestamps on this video in case you wanna bop around, but let's start off with, let's do the Hourglass palettes because I probably have the most to say about these. These are the new holiday palettes from Hourglass. These are their ambient light palettes. They are six pan palettes and they retail for $90. So I will leave the video linked down below where I shared my first impression because I also go pretty in depth in that video sharing some initial thoughts. At the time that I filmed that, they were just on the Hourglass site, but they're now available at both Ulta and Sephora as well and there are three shade variations of this palette the lightest one is the jellyfish the mid-tone one i always want to say cheetah or jaguar but it is the leopard palette every time i say that anybody goes like kelly that is a leopard and then the deepest palette is the snake palette there is also a brush in the collection and this retails for 54 dollars. so let me start off with my thoughts on the brush alone i think this is actually a wonderful brush i've loved using it and i think the shape is perfect for fitting into the pans inside of the palette that being said i know that this collection already is a splurge even just the palette alone so i don't think the brush is necessary to use the shadows i'm sure any brush that you already have in your collection would create a beautiful look with the palette but if you were on the fence and you don't mind the price point i do recommend the brush i think it's so fluffy it, br it blends the powders out really well and i think the shape is great not only for blush but also for bronzer I don't enjoy this brush as much for highlight, but that is more preference based because I like my highlight a little bit more targeted, but I do think this is a nice brush. Do you need to spend $54 on a brush? No, but if you're interested in this one, I do think it's great. But let's talk about the palettes. Now, these are very polarizing palettes, especially the price point alone. I have heard so many comments from subscribers on complete opposite ends of the spectrum. A lot of people think the $90 price tag is a steal, and a lot of people think it's ridiculous. And while it is definitely a splurge, I will say if you're an hourglass powder lover and you don't already have this range of shades, you are getting a lot of bang for your buck compared to purchasing them individually. So so for reference, each of these pans is the equivalent size to the minis. And the minis are already sold, so you could actually purchase like a mini blush, bronzer, highlight powder from Hourglass. However, a few of the shades within these palettes are a limited edition. And one thing I wanna note, if you're choosing between the three different color variations, they don't actually like fully line up. It's not like every single one of them has two blushes, two bronzers, two highlights, no, it's kind of random. So for example, the Leopard palette has three blushes, the Jellyfish palette has two blushes. Granted, these tones could be used wherever you'd like on the face. I think even like the more um, setting powders could be used as really subtle, very diffused highlighters. I think for the right person, this would be a very well-loved palette. Palette. But yeah, I would say you have to love Hourglass. You have to be okay with this very splurgy price point. But I do think you get a lot of use out of having all of these products in one singular palette. And especially when you consider the alternative of purchasing each of these pans individually, there is a bit of a savings there. My only real critique is that the pans are a little bit small and because they're all right next to one another in the palette, Depending on the brush I'm using, sometimes it's hard to stay within the one pan. That is one thing I do really like about the brush in the collection. The shape of it makes it really easy to dip into the pan that you want. But sometimes, especially when I'm trying to get into the bronzer shade and I'm using a bigger, fluffier bronzer brush, I do feel like accidentally I end up dipping a bit into the blush. So that's really my only downside. I think these are great, but maybe just not for everyone. Okay, let's talk about something that has really impressed me more than I was expecting. The new lip liners from Jones Road. So these retail for $22. I'm actually wearing one of them today. I have on the shade Nude Road. And even just going to find these to sit down and film this video was a challenge for me because that's how frequently I've been using them that they were scattered between different purses of mine. Like I have one more of them, but I can't find it. I'm like, it's in one of my purses somewhere because these have been in my bag constantly which tells you a lot because normally I don't stray away from my NYX lip liners. You know my obsession with the pencil liners from NYX. These have been taking their place lately. I feel like I'm getting similar longevity to the NYX, a really great defined line and pigment, but they're slightly creamier, 
without being too creamy. Cause I don't like my lip liner to have too much of that creamy texture because I find that I can't get the sharp line that I want. I don't tend to get the same amount of longevity. I've been reaching for these over my NYX. That being said, the NYX ones are $4 and these are $22. So I don't think that's a fair comparison, but I did want to point it out just because you know how obsessed I am with the NYX lip liners. That being said though, I recently have tested out a few Rimmel London lip liners now that they're cruelty free. Oh my gosh, I'm loving those. Okay, you know my obsession with lip liners. So these are wonderful, highly recommend. That being said, I don't think you need to spend $22 on a good lip liner. I would recommend the NYX or the Rimmel if you want a more budget friendly option, but I do think this is a great formula. Okay, this is a bit random. Let's talk about the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Shift Lipsticks in the new shades. So the pH adjusting lip products from Tarte are not new, but they just launched new pastel shades in the collection. And I've been testing these two out and I like them way more than I was expecting to. So the green one is in the shade Limeade and the purple one is in the shade Rock Candy. So the color changing version of the Maracuja lipsticks are already on Ulta and Sephora with the original shades, but the new pastel ones that were like just added are only available on the Tarte website, but these retail for $24 a piece. And surprisingly, I do notice a bit of a difference between the shades. That's not typically the case with pH adjusting lip products. Most of them create a very similar tone on the lips but I do notice like a minor variance between the colors here. That being said, I think the difference is minimal enough that I don't think you need more than one. I say just pick the one that you like the most. The tone of the actual product does influence the color on the lips just a little bit. So for example, this more lilac one, I find makes my lips more of a brighter, almost fuchsia-y pink, whereas the green one almost looks a bit more reddish, orangey, that being said, the difference I'm describing here is minimal, but I was expecting these to all look identical and they really don't. The funny part, I like these more than the original formula. Like the ones that are tinted and have pigment to them, I don't reach for as often, but this just feels like a hydrating lip balm that gives me a little bit of color because of that pH adjustment. I also don't find that these feel as thick and globby on my lips as the original Maracuja Juicy Lips. They do have that slight like cold tingly feeling, which personally I could do without, but I know a lot of people do enjoy that. So I'm actually surprised at how much I've been liking these. The green one I've been reaching for a lot. Like this one has been in my purse so much lately. But a drugstore pH changing lip product I wanna talk about, the new lip oils from Catrice. So I've actually talked about these already in a recent video, but I did wanna follow up with more of a thorough review of the Catrice Glow, no, <laughs> the Catrice Tinted Lip Gloss in Glow. Why was that so hard for me to say? So I'm assuming these were intended to kind of mimic the Dior lip oils. I know e.l.f. just launched their brand new lip oils. I'm really excited to test those out, but I wanna talk about these because these actually are also pH adjusting. So I have two shades. This one is called Keep It Juicy, and this one is called Drama Mama. And once again, I do notice a slight variance between the two shades, even though they are both pH adjusting. I think that more so comes from the fact that the gloss itself is tinted. So you're seeing a little bit more red when you apply this versus this one is a bit more of that like sheared out pink. These are so plump and juicy and they feel nice on the lips. They also provide a bit of hydration. I think this is a really great drugstore option for a lip oil. They retail for $6 a piece. So they're actually, I believe, the most inexpensive lip oils or some of the most inexpensive at the drugstore, you know, we'll say that. Compared to even the brand new e.l.f. ones that are $8, but like the Milani, the CoverGirl, the NYX, those are three of my favorite formulations, but those are between nine and $12. So to get these for about half of the price of that is a steal. I shared a look on my Instagram using the shade Drama Mama to create that like cherry cola lip that's been so trendy lately. I used a darker lip liner and then actually a little bit of brown eyeliner to amplify the lip liner a little bit. And then I have this in the center as kind of that red gloss. I think it's perfect for that look if you've been wanting to recreate it. I think this is just a wonderful lip oil option at a drugstore price point. But let's talk about something that's not at a drugstore price point and something that is obnoxiously priced, the new Charlotte Tilbury Magic Water Cream. So this is different than the original Magic Cream. This is the Magic Water Cream. It is a new formula. First compliment I will give this product is that it doesn't have fragrance in it, though most Charlotte Tilbury products 
do. So I'm glad that they opted for this fragrance-free moisturizer. But this jar, while it is luxe and beautiful in Charlotte Tilbury, uh, it is $100. For this full size that is incredibly steep for a moisturizer and based on my experience with this i can't say my results justify that price point whatsoever like this is a nice unscented moisturizer it hydrates my skin which is what i would expect a moisturizer to do but i can't say that my results were like leaps and bounds above my drugstore options or even my favorite high-end moisturizers that are already pricey but still half the price of this like if you want to splurge on a moisturizer you could spend a good $50 on a moisturizer from pharmacy or skin fix. Glow recipe, I'm looking over at my table with my skincare products on it. My results with this were so unremarkable. Like for me, this is a moisturizer. I can't say that it left my foundation laying any better on the skin, even though that is the intended purpose of this. It's really designed to be worn underneath makeup. You know, it has niacinamide in it, which personally I love, my skin loves, but there are a lot of alternatives that also include that ingredient. It's pretty easy to find. Personally, I would skip this one. Another one I would skip, but this one is pretty bad. Uh, the new Shadow Sticks from Fenty. I had really high hopes for these, but I just can't say that they're anything remarkable. I actually would avoid these products, but these retail for $25 a piece and they have two different options. There are matte shadow sticks and shimmer shadow sticks. Right off the bat, the longevity is simply not there with these products. They crease, they fade, they do not wear throughout the day, which is what I'm really looking for out of a shadow stick. But beyond that, the shimmer ones, as you go to blend them out, they really disappear. Like any of that like shimmery effect almost melts away as you're going to blend it out. So there's almost this like learning curve of trying to blend it out while getting the shadow to still be visible. They're incredibly difficult to work with. I've found ways to kind of make them work, but I just don't think they're very user friendly. I actually noticed kind of similar issues with the matte shadow sticks. They blend out pretty patchy. They don't wear well. I have so many favorites from Fenty. Like they're probably one of my favorite high-end brands, but these I would definitely skip, especially for that price point. You could go out and get the hard candy shadow sticks for like $5. Elf makes great shadow sticks. I would definitely avoid those ones from Fenty. Let's talk about the new lip creams from Sigma. So this really wasn't what I was expecting it to be when I first heard about these products. The shade that I have is Begonia and these retail for $22 a piece. This is in the same packaging as their lip oils. So for some reason, I was anticipating it to be something similar to that, perhaps with a little bit more pigment to it. But I would say the formulations are actually very different. This doesn't feel like a lip oil. If anything, I would say it more closely resembles a very hydrating liquid lipstick in terms of the pigment. And there's actually a lot of opacity to this product. It reminds me kind of of like those velvet liquid lipsticks that we got years ago, but it has less of that velvety texture texture to it, maybe even like a lip gloss that's super, super pigmented. So I find with this product, I need very little of it. Like if you're applying a lot of it, you're gonna get almost like a globby effect. So I had some on before I sat down to film this, but I have been eating and drinking. So let me reapply and you can see on camera. These are also really comfortable on the lips. So I like to take just a little bit and just apply it on the bottom. Maybe add a little more if I need to, but mostly just tap out a small amount of it. It's a very pigmented lip product. This shade in particular, I wore the other day with a lip liner from Rimmel London, like the one I was talking about. It is like a dark brown. I applied that on the outside and this on the inside and it was like the prettiest 90s grungy nude lip. And these sit really well. Like there is obviously gonna be transfer here. It is a glossy texture to it, but I would say it's almost like a marriage between a lip gloss, like an old school lip gloss, not like the new lip oil formula that we're seeing everywhere like an actual lip gloss merged with a liquid lipstick. You know, it's a higher level of pigment than we've been seeing lately. Like most lip launches are very sheared out these days. So this feels a bit unique to me. I've been reaching for it often and I like it a lot more than I was expecting to. At first I was like, I don't know if this is for me. I kind of prefer the more like sheer lip oil look, but a little bit of this goes a long way and it just looks so nice and hydrating on the lips. As always, I will have everything linked down below, but I really hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!